Right on time for Hope TV News Watch on this 9th day of April 2024. A very good evening to you and welcome to the broadcast. My name is Kennedy Kimani and my co-presenter on the Sun Language Interpretation tonight is Boniface Moridi. The National Council of Churches of Kenya has called for proper public participation before the implementation of the governance and electoral reforms proposed in the report of the National Dialogue Committee. And as Grace Hardy now reports, NCSK has emphasized that any changes to the constitution should be driven by the people as sovereign power is in their hands. In a move to ensure the effectiveness of the National Dialogue Committee NADCO report, the National Council of Churches of Kenya, NCCK, is now advocating for the report to be disclosed to the public before its adoption. Addressing the press in Nairobi, the clerics have raised concerns that the National Assembly is seeking to effect the recommendations of the committee, especially a massive review of the Constitution without a recourse to citizens. The NADCO report was developed by the the committee co-chaired by WIPA leader Kalonzo Msioka and National Assembly Majority Leader Kimani Ichungwa after Kenya Kwanza government made a truce with the opposition front, Azimiola Umoja Wan Kenya Alliance to dialogue after months of street demonstrations. Among other proposals, the NADCO report seeks to amend 25 articles and add six new ones in the 2010 constitution. You ask in the Kenya, what is in the NADCO report? They don't know. When we met with the NADCO, the National Dialogue Committee, we, are, we told them that it is not fair for them to finish their report and take it to Parliament before they have validated it with the public. Our pleas were not heard. Now it has gone to Parliament and uh, all intent and purpose show like they want to finish the process without the people. So today we want to remind them that any constitutional amendment in the country must be people driven and there has to be consensus of the people um, as per Article 1 because that power to amend the constitution is not delegated to parliament. Considering the governance and electoral reforms outlined in the NADCO report, the clerics, led by NCCK Secretary General Canon Chris Kinyanjui, have opined that some leaders are working towards subverting the will of the people. Furthermore, NCCK has highlighted that while the NADCO report proposes significant governance and electoral reforms, they believe that Kenya is not currently prepared for a referendum due to the ongoing and resolved issues affecting the nation. As NCSK, we are not of the view that Kenya is ready for a referendum during this uh, period. We have very many other challenges and will urge Parliament and all the stakeholders to avoid any amendments to the Constitution that will require the country to go through a referendum. However, if this bill goes to the people and the people come up with any referendum agenda, we want the people to be there because the, the referendum is also um, a consequence of participation of the people. But parliament cannot process all the business and then take the final uh, amendment to the people the way BBI did. Addressing the ongoing health crisis caused by the prolonged doctor strike, the clerics have criticized the government for what they perceive as insufficient efforts to resolve the strike. The church leaders are now calling for dialogue to address this issue promptly to curb its adverse impact on Kenyans. The feeling of most church leaders is that the government is not doing enough to resolve the doctor strike. And we are calling on the government, especially the Ministry of Health and the Council of Governors, to meet and dialogue because we believe that dialogue is the key to resolving the issue rather than um, <coughs> talking at each other. And we believe that uh, it is time for government to stand up and stop the suffering of the Kenyans who cannot access um, services in the health, public health facilities. Reporting for Hope TV Newswatch, I'm Grace Ahati.
Uh, thank you so much, Grace, for that report. Now, Azimiolo Moja, one Kenya coalition party leaders, have now threatened to join doctors in their ongoing strike if the government will not move with speed to unlock the current stalemate. Led by Wapa Party leader Kalonzo Musioka, the opposition faction say they are ready to show solidarity with the medics in the streets if push comes to shove. The remarks come two days after President William Ruto told doctors to understand that there is a limit to what the government can spend on their salaries and allowances. When the whole thing started, the Secretary General of the doctor's uh, organization was actually uh, not only tear gas but, but hurt and we went to see him in the hospital. Since then we had hoped that the Kenya Kwanzaa regime would have taken seriously the, the demands by the doctors. So without much ado, we want to say we stand in absolute solidarity with the doctors. They're entitled, as usual, under Article 37 of our Constitution to picket, to demonstrate, to go on strike. What you are now saying is this matter has assumed another dimension, that uh, the whole president comes back and he says, will not pay, won't pay. Goes on to say that they do not have, we have to live within our means. Now we all know that Kenya Kwanzaa regime has taken um, serious cognizance of the factors of production. We want to congratulate them for it. When they say they want to go for, for, for development uh, in terms of uh, economic growth and not consumption, but they've been preaching water and driving, drive, actually drinking heavy wine. Look at the, the style, the lavish style that they have assumed. Away from politics, under President William Ruto has emphasized that the government and the religious organizations have a collaborative role in tackling social ills and economically empowering communities. Speaking during the 24th General Assembly at the St. Andrews PCA Church in Nairobi, the head of state appealed to church leaders to help the government eradicate illicit bruise, drugs and insecurity challenges occasioned by banditry and cattle rustling. To work together in that space. Ile mi naomba nyinyi ni tushirikiane. Ndiyo tuweze eh, kutembea hii safari. Na kama mahali kuna makosa, mutatueleza, tutarekebisha. Mahali munaweza kutusaidia kuhamazisha wananchi, tutashukuru. So that we can move all together. We did agree with the church that even as we have a symbiotic relationship between the church and the state, that the church will continue to be the conscience of our society and when need be, the church will speak out on behalf of the people in positively criticizing government when need be. And as the moderator said this morning, where we do well, they will not whisper as he asked us to whisper to the church when they do well. They Kwa hii nafasi mungu wa menipatia niwe kiongozi wa Kenya. Ni kujaribu kiwango nitaweza kupunguza madeni ya taifa letu la Kenya so that we can leave an inheritance for our future generations, not debt. That war is on from our end. But we cannot win it alone. We want the support of our PCA church. We want you to help to mentor our young people and to counsel them as well, and where you can, to join the government in creating rehabilitation centers so that we can save our dying population. Your Excellency, these ministers will tell you, there is no home that is not affected. Even their own homes are affected. True or false? Jenge kanisa. Kwa sababu kujenga kanisa ndiyo mapenzi ya mungu. Hata na pale bado tunahitaji pesa ya evangelism. Kuna watu hawajafikiwa na neno la Mungu. Hata ile matatizo ya banditry tuko naye kule West Pokot na sehemu nyingine silale. Tatizo kubwa is spiritual warfare. 
we want PCA to send more missionaries into remote parts of Kenya. Kwa sababu matatizo katika sehemu hiyo kati yake ni matatizo ya spiritual warfare. President William Ruto has announced the abolishment of vetting during the national ID card application process for members of certain ethnic groups start, starting May 2024. Speaking on Monday during a Muslim leaders' iftar dinner at State House Nairobi, the head of state said that the government was amending the guidelines on ID card issuance to abolish the process which he described as discriminatory. The process involves the applicants who are not considered indigenous communities being required to provide proof of Kenyan citizenship to be issued with ID cards. Such persons comprise Kenyans of Somali, Arab, Nubian and Asian backgrounds. Tunataka mtoto wa Kenya awe Muislamu Mkristo awe anatoka sehemu yoyote ya Kenya wapate nafasi sawa and that every child should be treated equally. Ile policy ilikuweko pale mbeleni imebidi tuibadilishe and we have now concluded the policy documents and from the beginning of may this year in a few days from now there will no longer be vetting for people who want to get ids and i am going to be issuing a policy document to make sure that we have a mechanism that is similar to other Kenyans so that we don't discriminate on the basis of religion or region. Bado tutakuwa waangalifu kwa mambo ya usalama lakini that should not be a basis for discriminating against any section of our society we must live together as the people of kenya moving on swiftly and more than 7000 learners in laikipia county have benefited from porridge flour to improve nutrition courtesy of the office of the first lady rachel ruto speaking in a new queue on tuesday during the official flagging off of the food aid laikipia county deputy governor ruben kamori said that the 250 bales of the flour will address malnutrition among the school learners in the county. Kamori pointed out that the porridge will ensure pupils do not miss out of school due to hunger. Leo tuko na furaha sana. Leo tumepata rafiki wetu Mama Rachel Luto, eh, first lady of the Republic of Kenya timu yake yote iko hapa na leo tunasema shukran kwa ile mazuri ambayo tumeletewa leo leo tumepata unga mo, eh, 250 bales of unga na hii unga ambayo imekuja leo ni ya kusupport watoto wetu wala watoto wa Korekipia North wala watoto wa Korekipia East wala watoto wa Korekipia West wote watafaidika kwa hii mradi na pia tunashukuru partner wetu rafiki wetu sana Mr. Kome wa UN Habitat hii unga ambayo imekuja leo tutaweza kuulicha utoto wa kids ile ile iko hapa tunaweza kusaidia kama watoto 107 na najua hiyo unga wakipata ama uji wakipata itakuwa kwa manufaa zaidi kwa kwa their nutrition na pia kuwezesha atize wakiweza kusoma ni kuwa mzuri zaidi yo watching hope tv news it's now time for a short break but after the break up we back with the business and sports news stick around De -de 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 -de. Hope TV is where you look and live with an excellent selection of the best Christian programming consisting of local and international content of inspirational stories, talk shows, Bible commentary, youth, health shows, children entertainment, contemporary gospel music, extended times of worship, live broadcast, news, movies, drama, Christian ministry programs and so much more. 
Hope TV is another quality service from Christ is the Answer Ministries with over 45% of authentic and credible local content every week. Hope TV is a sister station to Hope FM, Kenya's leading Christian radio station with footprints across the country. Tune in to Hope TV, where you look and live. I've actually been trying to find a balance. Um, it's been really tough and hectic, but everyone says once you get a hang of it, it comes, becomes better. And I don't know, but I'm hoping to find a balance soon because it's really been hectic. But you've been in the job industry for a long time, so I think you would know better. Cindy. Uh -huh. What time is it? Uh, uh, I need to catch up on Leadership Forum. Do they have a radio here? Uh, uh, never mind. I brought my own. <gasps> no way. You can't be serious. Wait, why do you have a radio and you can just catch up with the shows on Hope FM podcast? Really? You don't meet of the world? Yeah. I mean, you can find them on whatever platform. Name it. AfriPods, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, um, Spotify. You name it. But I'm not subscribed on any of them. So no worries. You can just check out the latest episodes on hopemediakenya.org. You can now listen to select Hope FM programs on your favorite podcast streaming platform or directly on our website, www.hopemediakenya.org. Listen and live. Welcome back. Now let's get down to business. Hope Media and the Institute of Certified Secretaries ICS have signed a memorandum of understanding to jointly provide training, policy and a corporate governance. The partnership also aims at expanding good governance practices. According to Hope Media's head of media, Desmas Makanda, the partnership will as well boost good governance and leadership in churches, families and other institutions. Elias Wanjiro with more details. The head of media, Dismas Makanda, noted that the organization, which is the broadcasting arm of the Christ is the Answer Ministries, seeks to use the partnership to transform the lives of its listeners, viewers, and followers in the areas of leadership, integrity, corporate governance, and accountability, as these are key in driving sustainability. We are excited uh, for this uh, partnership uh, that we are getting into with uh, ICS. Uh, we must count ourselves a privileged media house, uh, being given the privilege to do this. And I want to, uh, to make it clear that the reason why we get into this partnership is because of our audience. Uh, we have a an audience that is quite uh, uh, keen on the kind of uh, content that uh, we share out. Uh, we, we focus on family content, we focus on a wholesome person, and therefore uh, having a partnership with ICS, basically we are looking at uh, every person that uh, listens to us and watches the Hope Media platforms. Hope Media and ICS are optimistic that the partnership will attract revenue both locally, nationally and internationally. The sector is a professional who is trained, on, examined and regulated on matters governance. And therefore every board, every organization should indeed have a certified secretary on board, uh, depending on the sector such certified sector could be called a corporate sector, a company sector, a corporation sector, a board secretary. Just like when you are taking a flight, you feel more comfortable if you have a professional pilot. It's the same way every board should ensure that their secretary is actually a professional who is trained, examined and regulated on matters governance. According to the ICS Chief Executive Officer Jeremiah Karanja, the partnership seeks to objectively promote governance and capacity building. To talk about uh, governance, I uh, will be keen to see how uh, we'll be able to tap into the wisdom and the knowledge and the resources available at uh, ICS to ensure that our people and our audience understand more uh, matters around uh, integrity, matters around accountability, and how can governance be able to drive families how can good governance uh, drive institutions, uh, churches, and businesses? And therefore, we are so excited that uh, close to about 20 million people will have a privilege uh, to tap into this wisdom that many of the organizations uh, have been looking for. So we are excited about this partnership. One of the things that we'll be doing 
uh, through this partnership with Hope Media is to promote governance uh, because one of the things that is ailing this nation is actually matters governance. And unfortunately, every person think is the other person who is not doing it. Uh, if you ask people on the ground, they will tell you people in government are stealing. And yet, uh, is that business person who is driving a government officer? So we are here to support government, uh, to tell even the general public, you also have a responsibility to ensure that uh, good governance practices are upheld. The already signed memorandum between the two institutions, that is Hope Media and ICS, will see institutions such as church, families and others being transformed through governance. Reporting for Hope TV News Watch, my name is Nelias Wanchir. The head of media this morning. All right, and to some sporting action now, the Kenya Ports Authority men's team and the Kenya Pipeline Company women's team are the winners of the KPC at 50 Volleyball Extravaganza Tournament, which was held at the Moy International Sports Center, Kasarani, from the 5th to the 7th of April. KPA triumphed over Trail Blazers in the men's finals in a thrilling 3 nil match, while KPC clinched their victory by defeating KCB women three sets to nil. We are very happy, elated, excited and thankful for the gesture that we received from Kenya Pipeline Company in form of sponsorship, very hefty, lucrative and elaborate sponsorship for this Kenya Pipeline Company at 50 Volleyball Extravaganza, which ran for three days. It started on Friday and we rounded off today and it was very exciting because first and foremost, Kenya Pipeline Company facilitated a lot of the conveniences that go with making a successful tournament. The sponsorship that amounted to 1.34 million shillings was enough to cover all the conveniences and all the facilitation. Our national women's team is preparing for the <coughs> Olympic Games and we are calling out, we are sending out a rallying call to the corporates and even individuals to support them in whatever way because we are trying to raise resources, we are trying to mobilize resources that will enable the team to go to, to Serbia for one and a half months training in July, run up to the, to the Olympic Games. Uh, I'm Dina Kirua, the General Manager for Human Resource and Administration at Kenya Pipeline. This tournament is uh, themed uh, KPC at 50 extrava Volleyball Extravaganza. It's one of the activities that were lined up as part of our 50 year celebration. The main celebration was last year in September, but we've had a number of activities. And as you know that we support volleyball uh, in this country, that is our sport and that's our brand, the volleyball women team. So we, have, we took a decision to support uh, this sport as part of also supporting sports in the country. For us, KBC volleyball is part of us and we support our team in all ways. We are supporting them for African uh, club championships coming up later this month in Egypt and we are preparing them for that purpose and we are providing support but we are trying to go beyond the KPC and also looking at the country and how we can support sports and that's why we had this event and we are grateful that the top teams in the country were able to come on board very competitive also as a preparation for the, uh, the, the coming African Cup, Champ Cup Championship in Egypt. Now Kenya has emerged as a leading hub for CAF coaching courses in Africa marked by substantial improvement in quality and accessibility over the past eight years. This is according to coach instructor Stephen Ochola who has said that thanks to the Football Kenya Federation's steadfast commitment, FKF has not only bridged the significant gap in coaching education but also established new standards of excellence. Coach Ochola is now encouraging former players to acquire 
coaching licensing and continue contributing to the game so as to shape the future of football in the country. Actually, we've done this for six months. Uh, it hasn't been easy. We thank uh, the Federation for giving coaches and referees as well the opportunities to learn and uh, get more knowledge and apply the same. You've seen uh, currently, apart from maybe the head coach of the national team, uh, we have also these other local coaches manning or rather taking care of uh, the under under 20 you've seen Beldin with the uh, under 20 girls senior team now we have Salim with the under 20 these are products of uh, what you've learned or uh, through the courses that uh, the federation have been conducting all through so i want to encourage kenyans if these opportunities or uh, courses are advertised in the media of course through the page of the federation please those coaches who have not done this, please find time and attend those classes. You'll see something different. Maybe you'll see uh, that you've been doing the wrong things. You know, most coaches are coaching from the experience, what they used to do back in the years. And things have changed. Times have changed. So we need to adapt to the modern trends of football. We can only get this by going through the coaches' courses. The other day we had an instructor from CAF who came over to oversee our exams, practical exams, and I was lucky or privileged to have a one-on-one -on -one with him when he was traveling back. And he was telling me that Kenya, we are lucky. We have people who are learned. We have elite people. And he gave me an example of a, an icon that we used to watch back in the days, uh, Daniel Amokachi. Amokachi only did his CAF C the other years. He's now going to do his CAF A because Nigeria is way back way back as compared to Kenya. Well, with that, you come to the end of our news tonight. Many thanks to you for making time for What's in Hope TV News. What we really do appreciate the value of your time. On behalf of the amazing team that made this bulletin a success, have yourselves a blessed night. My name is Kennedy Kimani, and my co-presenter on the Sun Language Interpretation tonight has been Boniface Moretti. <laughs>